Okay, welcome to the uh, this week's Geometry and Model Theory Seminar. Um, this week's speaker is Michele Serra from uh, Constance, and he will uh, talk to us about the uh, Reiner structures. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak here. And I also want to thank you uh, more generally for organizing this uh, semester, which to the extent to which I'm able to uh, attend from here, I'm enjoying and profiting of uh, very much. And hopefully, almost certainly, uh, in a few months, I will also be there with some of you. So for today, uh, I want to talk about uh, a joint work with um, Salma Kuhlman and uh, Sebastian Kapp, uh, who should also be in the audience so they can back me up if I say stupid things. And uh, this is uh, a work that um, started uh, from, as the title suggests, um, a work of uh, Reina of which I will also tell you uh, a few things uh, later. So before I um, explain all the motivations and what is behind this work, let me fix uh, a few notations so that we know uh, exactly what I'm going to talk about. So I will start by, a, um, by taking a field K, this is my symbol for little k, uh, any field for now. And we take uh, G to be a totally ordered abelian group. which I will uh, denote additively. So by this symbol, by a bold face K, or also K double bracket G, uh, it's probably uh, known to many of you, but it's uh, worth reminding what this is. And I denote by this the set of all formal expressions of this form, such that the AGs are coefficients from little k, and the support of A is well ordered by the support of A. I simply mean the set of elements of G such that the corresponding coefficients are non zero. Right, so uh, this bold face K is basically the uh, set of this uh, generalized formal power series with coefficients in little k and exponents in this uh, abelian group G. And by uh, a theorem of Hahn, from 1907, uh, we know that this is a field. With respect to the uh, point-wise, uh, component-wise uh, addition and the usual um, convolution multiplication, so the usual operations that we do on, uh, on power series. So it is a field and that I call the maximal Hahn field. Okay. So it has uh, a notable subfield that I also want to mention. So by K single bracket G, I'm going to denote the fraction field of this ring so if I take the set 
of all power series that have finite support uh, that is an integral domain. I can take the fraction field and I get um, this field that I denote by k single bracket g and that I am going to call instead the minimum field. Okay, so I have the maximal, I have the minimal. Uh, let me tell you what I mean in general by a Han field. So a Han field, for me, for the purpose of this talk, uh, is a field K such that it contains the minimal one and it is containing the maximum. All right, so this is what I mean by uh, a Han field. Um, notice here that uh, as opposed or in relation to uh, what has been uh, done in uh, other seminars and courses that um, are taking place in here, I am taking power series with uh, well-ordered support because I'm taking G to be, um, to be my value group, right? When, for example, when uh, you talked about trans series, uh, value group there is basically a multiplicative copy of this G that I take here and then the supports are taken to be anti-well-ordered. So just pointing this out um, to avoid confusion, should I? N. And let me give you uh, two uh, extreme or uh, very basic uh, examples uh, to set uh, the ideas. If I take my group G to be Z, I already have uh, an example of a minimal Hamm field. So KZ is nothing but the function field in one variable over k, and the maximal one instead is just a field of Laurent series. Whereas if instead I take g to be q, well, I have an example of a Han field which is neither minimal nor maximal, namely the field of preserve series. Sometimes, and I will denote the field of the series with a double brace, like this. And this is the field of the series. And so it's a series of the form sum n from n to infinity a n t to be n or l for a fixed l. So the exponents in a given preserve series have uh, one common denominator. All right, so this is not yet uh, the object, the main object that I want to focus on. Uh, the object I want to focus on So the k-hearts. So let us define this. k hulls. So I start by uh, I denote by W of G the set of all well ordered subsets of G. Probably abbreviated the most important word in the sentence, but this means well ordered. Uh, and then I take any family F contained in here. So any family of well ordered subject of G. And then I define the K hull.
of f, and I should say in k, is the set, just a set for the moment, uh, that I denote by k, double bracket f, simply consisting of all elements in k, whose support is an element of f. Okay, so k hulls are, I would say, the main object of uh, our work with Sebastian Salma. And uh, like I said... Sorry, Michele. Yes. So you, you are not... Sorry? Sorry. You are not assuming that W of G is made of subgroups of G. You consider only subsets, right? Exactly. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Subgroups. They can be any sets. As long as they Yes. Okay. Uh, right. So these were uh, maybe introduced, uh, I would say, by Reina, who had a specific goal uh, in mind. So Rainer's goal, and this was to um, produce a um, an algebraically closed field of power series. So, um, analog. to the field of Puiseux series in characteristic zero for characteristic P. And in order to do this, uh, he considers uh, this family. So I'm going to call the family R, just to uh, remind Reina. And a set A of this family R is of the form uh, an I and P with the R I such that I is in N, the M I is in the R I is integers, and N is a fixed natural number. So basically, he considers, so, and these are going to be the exponents of uh, the power series he wants uh, to consider. So he considers the power series of the form sum ai t to the ei in n, where the eis are exactly elements of this form. So if you want, in a certain sense, it is a piadic version of the. Um, of the Puiseux series. And what he proves is that uh, the k hull k of r is an algebraically closed field. Right. So, well, um, the reference. So this is a paper of Rayner, indeed, called An Algebraically Closed Field. Okay, um, so, right, so in order to uh, achieve this result, of course, he needs to prove that this k-hull is first of all a field, and then that it is algebraically closed. For the first uh, part, to prove that it is a field, he establishes a bunch of uh, conditions, six conditions, that a family F of this sort that I um, wrote here can satisfy, and uh, which are sufficient for the corresponding k-hull to be a field. And then, of course, he proves that 
uh, R satisfies exactly these conditions. So what we noticed is that, um, well, there are some, uh, some redundancies of, this of these conditions. They are only, uh, they are sufficient. Um, and so we wanted to analyze in a bit more detail what... Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry? Uh, can I ask something about uh, uh, R? Uh, yes. Uh, these A's, the sets A, um, yeah. they have to be well ordered, right? Uh, yes. So the way you describe A there, um, um, it's not, well, there has to be some conditions on the MIs and the RIs to make it well ordered. Is, you are implicitly assuming that or? Yes, 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 absolutely. Oh. Sorry. I mean, this, oh, this okay. is just, yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you need, of course, to have to fix all the details to, to have well right. ordered. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. Uh, right. So, right. So what we wanted to do is to um, analyze these conditions a bit uh, in, in a bit more detail and to find out what is in fact uh, sufficient, but also necessary uh, to make a K-HAL not just a field, but maybe to have some other algebraic properties, right? So our goal is instead to find necessary and sufficient conditions on a family F. Uh, in order for uh, K of F to be, well, a subgroup subring or subfield, a harm field. And in all these cases, also to fight to, uh, in order for our structure to be closed under truncation. Okay. And finally, uh, my, uh, let's say, my personal further goal, so. And the reason why I am even more interested uh, in this reign of structures is uh, that I want to study the group the OK, by which I mean the group of valuation preserving automorphisms of a Han field. And I want to do this by means of what I will call lifting properties. And I will tell you uh, in the final part of the talk uh, something more about the lifting properties and uh, what they have to do with Rayner fields. Basically, Rayner fields provide uh, examples of fields that satisfy these conditions. Okay, but let us come uh, first to this goal here. And the first thing that I want to do now is I want to put forward a whole bunch of conditions and and denoting them, I'm calling them conditions 2.1 because that is the uh, enumeration that appears in, in our paper. And since there are many of them, instead of numbering them, I prefer to uh, put uh, symbols that sort of evoke the meaning of each conditions. 
so let's quickly go uh, over them. On the left hand side, you have conditions that are more set theoretic. Actually, here I should write. Let F be a family of well ordered subsets of G. So these are conditions on such a family F. So, right, so on the left hand side, uh, the first condition is simply asking that F contains all the singletons. Then we have closure under um, subsets. If F contains a set, and B is a subset of that set, then B is also a member of A. Then we have closure undertaking unions. The fact that F contains the singleton zero, the fact that F is not empty, uh, and in it is closure under initial segments, right? If A is an element of F and B is an initial segment of A, then also B is an element of F. Whereas on the right hand side, we have uh, conditions which are more of a of an algebraic nature, so they have to do with algebraic operations somehow. So what I denoted by gen uh, is the fact that if I take the union of all the elements of F, we get a set of elements of G. I take the group they generate, and they generate the whole of G. Then we have closure under direct sums. Trend is closure under translation. If I translate a member of F by an element of G, by adding little g to all elements of A, we get again an element of F. Here, for lack of a better notation, I call it uh, greater or equal than zero, because it's saying that if I have a set, an element of F consisting of non-negative elements, then all the finite sums of elements of A form uh, an element of F. This is what I mean by this notation. And finally, this last condition says that as soon as a singleton belongs to F, then also the singleton contains the opposite of the element belongs to F. Okay. Clearly, we can see here that there are relationships between relations between uh, among these conditions, right? So, um, you know, condition the first condition, uh, the singleton condition implies the non emptiness, or the zero condition implies the non emptiness, or subset condition implies the initial segment, and so on. So, they are not independent. And what we can prove. Well, actually, first, what Rayner proves is that if F is a family of what ordered subsets of G, then we have this, uh, this implication. So non-emptiness and closure under subset and union implies that we get a subgroup. If on top of that we have closed, closedness under um, direct sums, we get a ring. And if instead we have this six conditions, which are the conditions that Rayner uh, puts in his paper, then we get a subfield. And because of this, I uh, give this definition and I call a Rayner field any subfield of the maximal Hamm field that can be expressed as a k-hull of a family satisfying the conditions expressed in the Okay, so what we do instead, we find, uh, well, instead, what we do on top of this is we look for uh, converses, right? So we want to know when those conditions or what conditions are also necessary to have um, to have those implications, and sorry, and for this we need to impose uh, some uh, more assumptions that become uh, heavier when we go uh, to richer structures. So, in the group case, all we need to assume is that K is not uh, F two. And then we know that um, these conditions are 
necessary and uh, necessary and sufficient to yield um, a subgroup. For the ring case, again, the condition given above are necessary and sufficient, provided we have either of these two assumptions. So either k is a field of characteristic zero, or we have this condition on the cardinality of k. So the cardinality of k must exceed uh, the cardinality of all ordered subsets of uh, G. And finally, for the field case in characteristic zero, we find that the k hull of f is a subfield if and only if f satisfies these six conditions containing the zero, uh, closed under subsets and unions and um, uh, direct sums. Um, direct sums, arbitrary direct sums of uh, positive elements and inverting the additive. And on top of this, if uh, we are in characteristic zero, we can also show that it is equivalent for a K hull to be a Han field, so simply to contain uh, the, the function field, the minimal Han field, and to be a Reynolds field. Moreover, under these conditions, we see that all these structures that we get in this way are uh, closed under truncation. And let me give you uh, two counterexamples for uh, k equal f2. So So the first counterexample is to the uh, truncation closeness. And for this, we can take uh, the field F2 extended by T squared plus TQ as a subfield of F2 of Z. And this is not truncation closed. As we can prove that uh, obviously t squared plus t cubed belongs to, to this field. But t squared alone doesn't. And a counterexample instead for, uh, for the last part of the theorem so if instead we take k to be uh, f2 extended by To the G for G in G, where I, we assume G to be countable this time. Then we can express K as K of F in a somewhat tautological way, where F is the set of the supports. Of elements of k, uh, but then we can see that this k hull, this k, cannot be a Raynor field because f does not satisfy is not closed under taking subsets. And yeah, so this is done uh, essentially by the cardinality argument. So, okay, um, I will give you 
uh, a quick corollary and then Michael? Uh, yes Sorry, uh, could you clarify, please? Why uh, do you expect the first example, counterexample, to be a, a Reiner field? Or uh, yes, shouldn't it contain the? Oh no, I'm sorry. Sorry. So the 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 first example is, sorry, I should I should have been uh, more clear. So this one. Um, is uh, a counterexample that we have in the group case. So it's a counterexample to this part here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry, I probably didn't mention that and I really should have. Thanks. Right. Um, so, yes. So, okay, so a few more. Uh, non-examples, I mean examples and non-examples. So one example is certainly the uh, field of Poisson series. This is also a Rayner field, which can be expressed as K of P, where uh, we take P to be the set of the family of sets of this form such that T is a positive integer and A is a well ordered subset of Z. Um, for an uncountable cardinal k, the set, so kappa, not k, uh, the set k kappa of a and k such that the support of a has cardinality less than kappa is also uh, a Rayner field. Well, is K now brackets F where F is A and T such that the cardinality of A is less than Kappa. And this is called the Kappa bounded. Absolutely. Right, and finally, uh, there is one more non-example that also falls uh, within uh, the second example that I gave here, but there's an easy argument to show that K of G in general is not the Rayner field. Because if we take already g equal to z, so we have we are just in the function field in one variable, then we have the power series 1 minus t to the minus 1, which we can write like this. Uh, this obviously belongs to kg, it's the inverse of a polynomial, but e to the t, which we can write as, we define as does not belong to this field, as can be proven by or checked by um, Eisenstein um, criterion, for example. But the problem here is that these two power series have the same support. And in a Rayner field, as soon as the field contains one power series with the given support, it has to contain all the power series with the same support. So the support for both of these power series is A. Okay. So, and a final corollary to the theorems above is that in characteristic zero, uh, 
uh, then k of f is a Raynor field or which is equivalent Han field if and only if f satisfies all conditions 2.1 okay so right so this is um, more or less what uh, I wanted to tell you uh, at least uh, just about um, just about uh, this paper and now I would like to um, connect uh, what I told you so far to the study of uh, of automorphisms of Hans fields. So so now let me move to Han fields. And so let's fix uh, K G as in the beginning and also a hand field K so comprised between K G and K double bracket. All right. Now uh on on a hand field there is a uh, canonical way of defining the valuation uh, i'm going to call it v and it has value group exactly g and i obtain it by mapping a the power series in k to the minimum of its support. And actually, there is a way to describe the, um, the valuation invariants of V uh, as Rayner structures. Indeed, the valuation ring of K can be obtained by taking this K hull. So the k-hull, where the family consists of all the well-ordered subsets of non-negative elements of G, and intersecting this with k. So this here alone is actually the um, the valuation ring of the maximal Hansen. And in a similar way, The valuation ideal is obtained by taking as my family the, um, the well ordered subset consisting of strictly positive elements of G. Right, and this valuation has as its residue field. The, the residue field of this valuation is isomorphic to the base field K. Okay, so I announced that I am interested in uh, valuation preserving automorphisms. So the out K for me would be the group of valuation preserving automorphisms of K, so which means sigma. And automorphisms of K such that whenever two elements have the same valuation, then also the images would have the same valuation. Let me write it down. Okay. So, and what I wanted to uh, look at for this group is. Uh, 
lifting properties. Okay, so I will define straight away what the first lifting property is. So there is a map from V of K to this product, the automorphisms of little k and the order preserving automorphisms of G. Let me call this map phi, mapping an automorphism sigma to a pair sigma k, sigma g, where sigma k uh, of alpha is defined by identifying alpha with an element of k, of, of this k, and applying sigma and then taking the zero coefficient. And uh, sigma g instead, I can view every element of g as the value of some element of uh, of k, and then define sigma g of v of a to be simply the value of sigma of a. All right, and I say that k has the first lifting property, I'm going to abbreviate it like this, if there is a section psi of phi. And so I have a section map going like this with the property that when I compose them like this, I get the identity in okay. And what does this have to do with rain of fields? where we can precisely characterize the reign of fields that satisfy uh, this property. In fact, here I'm... Uh, a Tony, can I ask something? Sure, please. When you say there is a section, it just means that the map is surjective, right? The section is just a theoretic section. It's a group theoretic section. I want a group homomorphism. Ah. Ah, group homomorphism. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, the same. Ah, right. So, a Rayner field K of F has the first lifting property if and only if F is stable. under the order preserving automorphism of G, meaning that if A is in F and tau is in O of G, then tau of A is also in F. And so, uh, thanks to this uh, characterization, then we can prove that obviously the maximal Hunt fields, all the kappa bounded Hunt field, um, the Quizzer series, and also the minimal Hunt field, although not the Rayner field, all have the, lifting, the first lifting property. So, knowing that we have the first lifting property, so here we have a section, then we can identify this group here as a factor of V of K. So it already gives us a first um, decomposition, which is not uh, the topic of today, but uh, since I announced lifting properties, uh, I will quickly tell you also what the second um, 
nifty property is and then what they are good for. So for, for the sake of today's talk, internal automorphisms of K will be automorphisms that are not just valuation preserving, but are valuation fixing. So Okay, and for this... Just uh, the, kern the kernel of phi, right? That's the quick way of saying it. Or the kernel of phi, yes, absolutely. This is the kernel of the map phi that I defined above. And for this group here, we, can, we have a similar map to the one we had before. I'm going to call it X this time, and this time the map goes into the homomorphisms of G into K star, multiplicative uh, group of K, and this maps an automorphism sigma to a homomorphism X sigma G to K star, mapping G to um, I take the image of t to the g, and of this I take the gth coefficient, right? Because sigma is valuation fixing, so sigma of t to the g has value g. It means it has a non-zero gth coefficient. And this definition here, this x uh, sigma defines indeed a group homomorphism of G into K star. And just as before, I say that K has the second lifting property if there is a section. P, or rather capital Rho, uh, of uh, X. So. And in fact, for these, uh, for the second lifting property, we can actually say that all Rayner fields and also K of G satisfy the second lifting property. Now, having these two lifting properties, uh, each of them allows to produce a, um, a decomposition of... So the first lifting property gives a decomposition of the uh, group of relation preserving automorphism. The second lifting property further decomposes the group of uh, internal automorphism, thereby getting a description of this group here in terms of the automorphism groups of the valuation invariants and the homomorphism group uh, between them. Um, so this is actually the um, content of my PhD thesis mostly and will also be the content of uh, a talk that I'm going to give uh, hopefully in Toronto uh, in June uh, within the workshop on Tain geometry. And so, yeah, if, uh, if you want to know who the murderer is, uh, stick around uh, and I will tell you that in June. Uh, for now, I will just pick two random colors to thank you all. Well, thank you very much. So we have maybe a little bit of time for questions before uh, our next uh, uh, session. I think 
it's on Mikela. Yeah. Okay, he can hear. Yeah. Just a quick question, Mikela, for please. Yes. Do you have exa do you have example of the first lifting property? Uh, sorry, I uh I, I I think you got cut off. Um, Do you have? Can you hear me? Uh, right now, yes. Okay. Have examples of fields without the first lifting property. Huh. Right. Um, yes. So no. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. At the moment, uh, so I only have examples where the lifting properties are satisfied. It is, um, it's been so far a hard to find examples where it is not. So unfortunately, I don't have any. Uh, it would be fantastic to prove that it is redundant, that it is satisfied everywhere, but I am afraid that's not the case. Um, but yes, um, unfortunately, I cannot. Um, Pin down the scope of the lifted property where it is, where it fails and where it doesn't. I have a condition that will make it fail, but for now, when I have tried something that has that condition, the condition that is here in the. Um, where is it? Here. Um, yeah. So when i try something that has that condition i never get a field so um yeah i i, I probably w was not very clever until now but no thank you thank you any other questions not then let's thank the speaker again thank you all for your attention yeah i will stop the recording now <laughs>